Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. For my next few videos, I'm going to be talking about Greek theatre. This includes their plays, the Greek chorus, their costumes and masks, the theatre buildings themselves, the philosophy and beliefs behind it all, and its influence on modern day theatre. These videos have actually been requested, which is why I'm doing them now, and I will be putting them into a playlist called Revision, as I want these videos to be enjoyable for you to watch, but also incredibly informative. I am actually studying Greek theatre at A level at the moment, so these videos are very well timed. I hope you enjoy them. So this vid for this video I am just going to do a bit of background on Greek theatre. The first thing that you need to know is that there were mainly two types of plays performed, comedies and tragedies, and tragedies are normally seen as the better ones. You also need to know that women were not allowed to be on stage, so men played their roles, and that at the beginning only one or two actors were allowed on stage at any one time. There are three historical figures who are known as the three trage tragedians, and are the most famous. There was Aeschylus, who was known as the father of tragedy, and he added a second actor onto the stage, and he loved something called the chorus. I discussed those in my video on the Greek chorus but Aeschylus loved them. The next tragedian was Sophocles, who introduced a third actor onto the stage and reduced the role of the chorus. And Sophocles wrote the three Theban plays, Oedipus the King, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone. And these are viewed by many as the best tragedies of them all. I disagree, but they are very good plays. It's the third tragedian who is my favorite, and he wrote Medea and the Bacchae and his name was Euripides, and he became more famous after his death, as he liked to shock the audience and was quite controversial for the time, but I'll discuss him more when I do beliefs and philosophy. There is one other historical figure who discusses Greek theatre and tragedy, and his name was Aristotle. He set down a few rules for tragedies and said they that they were to have embellished language, so the actors spoke and the chorus sang. He also said that they needed to end with a self-realisation, or aragnoresis, that allowed a release of emotion and tension for both the characters and the audience, known as a catharsis. He also said that a tragic hero could not be all good or all bad, but must be flawed, and that they must have a hamasha, which means fatal mistake, not a fatal flaw as many say now. Hamasha translates into fatal mistake and fatal flaw is a mistranslation. Tragedies had 10 different themes and these were gods, fate or free will, prophecy, religious rituals, the position of men and women, slaves, politics, family relationships, tragic heroism and justice or revenge. Comedies however only had six themes and these were quite similar. They included gods, death or the afterlife, the polis, which means a group of people or citizens, and they were usually mocked. It didn't matter if they were rich or poor. Other themes were men and women, slaves and politics. And some believed that in comedy, a fourth actor was allowed on the stage. But not everyone believes that, as there's not much proof. Comedy emerged from the worship of Dionysus, and literally means Song of the Commos, which was something done by the chorus. I will explain the role of Dionysus in theatre when I do beliefs and philosophy. There were a couple of plot devices used in both comedy and tragedy. There were messenger speeches in which a character, like a slave or a messenger, would talk to another cast member and explain all of the background information so that both the character and the audience understand. And there was also the Aegon, which just means debate. In comedy, there was an extra device called a parabasis, which is when the chorus would come to the front of the stage and talk to the audience, like comedians do in their shows nowadays. The language in comedy was a lot more normal and funnier than tragedies, as the language in tragedies was very stylized and grand. It was written like poetry and followed a metre. Tragic or dramatic irony was also used in tragedies, and this is where the audience already knows the myth or story, or a key element that the main character does not yet know. And that is where I will leave the introduction to Greek theatre. As I said at the start, I have done videos on the chorus, costumes and masks, theatre buildings, beliefs and philosophy, and influence on modern day theatre. 
so feel free to check these out. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment or subscribe. If you know anyone interested, or anyone that teaches Greek theatre or mythology, please let them know about my channel. Please let me know if you have any video requests, and you can also follow me on Twitter, there is a link to my page in the description below. Let's keep classics alive. I will see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.